Hi, I'm Aaron Hamlin, Executive Director for the Center for Election Science. Uh, so these videos are an opportunity to learn a bit about the staff, uh, so a bit about me. I live in Chicago, Illinois with my partner. I grew up in Northern Kentucky. Uh, that's also where I started my uh, academic path as well. I did my undergraduate in Northern Kentucky University, uh, focusing uh, did my uh, major in psychology, and, uh, my minor in math, focusing in statistics. After that, I went to uh, Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. There, focused mainly on statistics. I did a master's in um, educational psychology there. Uh, following that, I did a master's in public health at Indiana University in Bloomington. I focused on basic probability modeling, looking at contraceptive pregnancy rates over time, as well as looking at dual method use. Um, and then uh, following that, I went to uh, Lansing, Michigan uh, at Cooley Law School. And that was also where uh, worked with the founding board uh, to incorporate the Center for Action Science. I didn't spend much of my professional career in law. I worked uh, briefly as senior in-house counsel at a transportation company in Florida, but the bulk of my professional career has been in the nonprofit sector. Um, for a while, at the same time, while running the Center for Action Science, I had run another organization uh, that focused on uh, uh, providing funding for pharmaceutical drug development uh, to provide uh, a pathway to get new male contraceptives to market. I was able to bring that organization to a budget of roughly a million dollars a year before um, uh, working to get the Center, Center of Production Science uh, its initial funding so that we could have staff. And uh, so now, uh, since then, uh, just working with the Center of Production Science um, a bit about my role with the organization as executive director. I do the uh, top level hiring, also uh, work on uh, making sure that we have uh, the right strategy, working with our board, identifying any kind of particular barriers that keep us from being able to achieve the types of outcomes uh, that allow us to be able to fill, fulfill our mission. Uh, also do a bit of the technical analysis so with some of the articles that you see and I'm also involved with the fund uh, raising, particularly with our uh, larger donors. Aside from professional work uh, with hobbies, normally during non-pandemic times, I uh, do jujitsu, which is focusing on joint manipulation as well as chokes and um, bouldering, uh, indoor bouldering. I'm afraid of heights, so I try not to do anything that's too tall. Uh, and but. Uh, with those not being available at the moment, um, we do have a, a workout room, which I'm able to at least uh, do some functional exercise. And uh, aside from that, I uh, do lock picking, which is that's something that you need to uh, be uh, engaging with others in. Um, and with lock picking, is something that I have learned, uh, taught myself during kind of a slow semester in college, and with Lockpicking, uh, the way that it works is you're just mimicking the, the function of a key. Um, you're raising uh, pins to a particular height uh, and uh, to allow a cylinder to turn uh, to actuate some kind of locking mechanism, such as uh, retracting uh, uh, ball bearing, uh, for instance, to allow a shackle to be able to uh, pull out or to retract a, um, a bolt to allow a door to be able to open. And then the other thing that the key does is it just acts as a lever to be able to rotate. Within the lock itself, you have what are called these key pins, uh, which uh, rest inside the cylinder, and then these driver pins. These are all normal driver pins, so nothing with security features. And then you have your uh, springs at the top pushing the driver pins down. And as long as you don't have any overlap, uh, between, say, these key pins going into this upper chamber or these driver pins falling into the cylinder, uh, this uh, key is free to rotate. But the moment any of those uh, goes into these other section, um, the uh, the key cannot rotate. So if I, if I pull the key out some, um, some of these are uh, going into the other chambers and you can't rotate it. So that's how a uh, lock works. With, with lock picking, you're basically simulating that by um, you have a tension tool to for the rotational force and then you have a picking tool 
to uh, bring the pins to the appropriate height and uh, you can feel for when a particular pin is binding and it needs to be lifted and when you do that for all the pins it allows the cylinder to, to rotate And there we go. You can do the same thing as, as well. Um, instead of attacking the pins individually, you can also attack them all at once using something called a, a rake. And you're just going through and just attacking them all at the same time. And some, some uh, locks have some security flaws. For instance, uh, this is a, a master lock. Uh, this one, um, there's actually too much space in this upper chamber, uh, which allows for both the key pins and the driver pins to move up. And so this is a comb pick. And all we're doing here is just pushing both the key pins and the driver pins up into that upper chamber. It's called a bypass technique because you're not really picking the lock, you're really going around it. Um, so that's a bit in terms of side hobbies that I have. Um, I also do a lot of uh, essay writing, um, uh, particularly on philanthropy, looking at um, uh, voting methods as well as essays on contraceptives. Um, you can find those. I have a personal website, AaronHamlin.com, where you can um, read more uh, essays if you are interested in learning more about uh, philanthropy or different types of technical uh, ways of giving. Uh, but that's a bit about me and I encourage you also to uh, check out the rest of our uh, staff. Uh, we have a lot of really uh, very smart and uh, very cool uh, folks on our team. So I encourage you to go check them out. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.